boy, it, it, this is even tough just to, to, to speak about because as of April 5, 112 people were killed on the roads in Jamaica. What are the factors contributing to the growing numbers of road accidents and what can be done to reduce the incidence of road fatalities? Um, Dr. Lucian Jones is the Vice Chairman of the National Road Safety Council and he's with us now. Morning, sir. Welcome to... Morning, morning. Morning, guys. Morning. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Giving thanks. Grace and mercy. Yeah. Um, there are so many different reasons, but I want to start with something that Dr. Leo Ayi says. He says, falls in road engineering continue to contribute to fatal road crashes. What does that mean? Okay, so the foundation of, on which we try and promote road safety comes out of WHO. It's called the safe systems. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Paris is alluding to one of those, which is safe roads. So you have safe speeds, safe roads, safe vehicles, safe road users, and an efficient post-crash system. You put all those together and you get a whole program that you can advance. But one of the challenges we are facing now is something ACP McKenzie reminded us um, recently. We're in a program together. That between age 18 and 39, we locate a problem with young men who are making poor decisions and either dying or causing people to die on the road. Mm. So they're making poor decisions about speeding when they're not supposed to speed. They're making poor decisions because they can't drive. There was a power study done some years ago, self-reporting. Um, if I remember correctly, about 25% of people, it's fairly high, reported that they had not gone to the depot to get a license. They had gotten from another reason. So people are making poor decisions because they're driving under the influence of alcohol. Mm. You, you know about special, boom and, and alcohol now. People are making poor decisions because they're driving under the influence of ganja. They are texting and driving. And they are making the decision because they believe they will not get caught. So the big challenge for us now really is to try and get into these young men's, primarily young men, heads, either through public education or having an island-wide program where you can reach them or beefing up the enforcement so that they understand that if they continue to make these decisions, they will get caught. So thankfully we have a new road traffic act. We have an improved ticketing system. Police are now writing tickets electronically. So the old system where you wrote a ticket on paper and it took a long time to go through the, um, the process. That's, that's gone. You have a new ticketing system. The challenge you face now is that the ITA, which is responsible for um, issuing demerit points, and if you accumulate sufficient demerit points, you can get your license suspended. That system is not working as well as we want it to now. So the bottom line really is that unless people understand that if they continue to speed, if they continue to go on the corner and, and take a long line of traffic, which is madness taking, taking place in the country, speed on wet roads, then you're going to get caught and you get fined. And if you don't pay a fine, someone's going to come to you, you got to, you got to, um, you got to go to the lockup. It seems you've been talking about this for quite some time, sir. I mean, last year, this time, we were at 114 road fatalities. It's more than that now. Yeah. Today, we are, the latest data is 119 dead and 124 last year. Okay. So I, I'm trying to find, outside of reinforcement of the law, what are the other things that we can do to address Right, it? Right now? Yes. Well, as I just said, we only have two options. Are, Mr. Saga used to speak about pulling levers. There are only two levers you can pull right now, enforcement and public education. Mm -hmm. We have to find a way to get into the minds of these young men so that they will stop making poor decisions on the roads. So it's not just in terms of poor um, road users. You mentioned at the start, yes, sometimes people are suffering from potholes, but that's not the basis of the problem. One crash occurred in front gully where one person died initially, it's now three, because a tire blew out. So that's part of the problem, safe vehicles. So you combine everything together, but right now, on this day of April, you need to enforce um, the regulations. Mm -hmm. And police cannot be on every corner. You need to flood the place with cameras. We need to augment the role of the policemen who are using their radar guns to catch you by using cameras. 
and we need to have a sustained high level public education the campaign. cameras would would find out and show what what would the cameras show well the cameras would detect um, speed infractions it will detect people going through red lights we have a whole army of people in Jamaica going through red lights that is nobody's business mm. so and these are causing crashes it's the attitude you know it's the mindset of people the drivers if they don't care and they won't get caught but they will get caught and they will die they have been dying so we need to find a way to get into the minds of these people part of the challenge apart from public education is getting next to these people talking to them um, and one of the things that we have not done as a National Road Safety Council is to create an island-wide organization. We have an opportunity now. Uh, we have a new program, joint partnership with Jamaica National, uh, funded by a global charity, 750,000 euros, to create a national helmet wearing coalition where we get young uh, motorcycle riders to, to drive um, more carefully and to put on helmets. So part of the program is to create an island-wide program, mm -hmm. which is much better than what you have now. So yes, you, you need to get public education going through the media, like no, but you also need to sit down with these guys on a corner mm -hmm. and talk to them and reason with them and tell them that I can drink special and go drive. You can smoke ganja and go ride. It's madness. Well, I I'm hearing you, sir, and I think that's very optimistic. I really hope it works, but I, I, sometimes I wonder, um, having seen your own friends, you know, involved in fatalities, why would you make um, similar decisions? But there, there are hot spots in Jamaica. Yes, yeah. Um, what can we do about those hot spots? Because we hear so many accidents happening, and we think to ourselves, why? Why are people not um, being more cautious when they arrive at this area? Is it signage? Is it knowledge that it's a hot spot? What are some of the things that we can do? It's, it's all of the above. One of the challenges we, we face as a council is persuading um, agencies to do the work that we think they ought to be doing. For example, the police went around the entire island identifying those spots that you spoke about, mm -hmm. where you have poor markings, where you have potholes, where the sand is not sufficient. And we approach National Works Agency until this day, we can't get them tapped. Their answer, they don't have any money. Yes, they don't have any money, but you need to find the money because these things are urgent. When you have 10 people dying in the first, the first four days of April, that's a national crisis. Money needs to be found from somewhere mm -hmm. if we are going to deal with this thing because this is the second leading cause of violent death in the country now. The entire country needs to understand it, right behind murder, and everybody's agreed that we need to fight crime. But road safety, road fatality is the second leading cause of violent death in this country. It's a big thing. It's not an ordinary thing. Mm -hmm. And we are treating it as if, you know, like, like a nine-day wonder. Yes, they might kill off themselves. But that's not the point. People are dying and loved ones are dying and husbands are dying. And when, when husbands die and those who are working, families can go into poverty. It's part of the problem. Plus, we're losing a lot of money. The Ministry of Health is spending a whole lot of money treating injuries in the healthcare system. We are damaging our GDP. You can lose up to 2 or 3% of our GDP. So it's a huge problem, and we're not taking it as seriously as we should. With all that you've said and with all that we hope to see, how optimistic are you that we could stop this madness? Forever. Why? When we started in um, 1993 as an act of parliament, the average road fatality was 400 plus. 2012, we managed to get it down to 260. So it can happen. The big reason why it has escalated and gone north again has to do with the number of motorcyclists who are dying. These young men who are riding motorcycles. And between 2012, when 41 persons died because of motorcycle, last year it was about 150. It has exploded. So we need to find a way to deal with the number of young men who are riding motorcyclists who are meeting a head-on collisions. God knows how you do that. Repeatedly, not one or two, who, are, who take off the headlights and they have a crew called No Headlight Crew. So to be initiated into your, into your gang, you have to take off headlights and drive at night. It's madness. So it's a big challenge. It's a big ask. But we are committed to continue with the struggle. As I said, in Angola, Aluta, continue. We continue to struggle.
Yep. Thanks for coming, sir. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Dr. Lucian Jones, Vice Chairman of the National Road Safety Council. Up next, we hear from the President of the Jamaica Agricultural Society. We'll soon come.